The IDF floods Hamas terror tunnels with huge pumps that can fill an Olympic-sized pool in only seven minutes. This is the 117th day in the Hamas-Israel war, and I'm Yair Pinto reporting to you from Israel. Before we get into today's report, I would like to ask you to please share this video. This, together with praying about what you see in these videos, is the best way you can help us get the truth out about what is going on in Israel today. Now let's jump right into today's news. We have heard unconfirmed reports in the past about a plan to flood the Hamas terror tunnels, but now we have official confirmation of this. Several units in the IDF and the Ministry of Defense have developed a number of tools for injecting high flow water into Hamas's underground tunnels in the Gaza Strip, adding to the toolbox that the IDF has for dealing with these complex tunnels. And this is the process. Part of a program called Atlantis that the IDF has been working on for many months includes the installation of pumps and pipes in many locations. But the engineers have also found a method to ensure that water is not just randomly being pumped into a hole in the ground. The computer programs guiding the system can direct the flow of water being pumped into the shafts and tunnels where it will do the job of cleaning them without damaging the underground water or soil in the area. It's very high tech and I'm sure it costs a lot of money to develop this kind of technology. But this is the way Israel does business, making sure to not do any unnecessary damage to civilian infrastructure while defending ourselves against terrorists. As a footnote, I'm sure that this technology will have many implications in agriculture and water management far beyond the destruction of Hamas's terror tunnels and will be yet another way that Israel is blessing the whole world with its innovation and technology. The Atlantis system is already at work with pumps having been installed in Khan Yunus earlier this month. American officials familiar with the projects have confirmed that the water being pumped into the tunnels is fresh water from Israel, not seawater from the Mediterranean Sea, as was the case in earlier systems. Atlantis is the result of an accelerated program of research and development, training, and manufacturing of specialized equipment. As I said before, it is only one tool in the toolbox the IDF has for dealing with Hamas's infrastructure underneath the Gaza Strip. This toolbox also includes aerial attacks, underground maneuvers, and special operations with technological means. You might have heard reports that the project is only a partial success, but the IDF has released data showing that it was such more than that. And now we want everyone to know about it. However, as much as the IDF makes use of cutting edge technology to battle terrorism, old fashioned battle techniques such as maneuver, fire support, and close quarters combat are still being used as well. The fighting continues this week in the northern part of the Gaza Strip. The forces of Division 162 today completed a day-long maneuver against Hamas positions around the Shifa Medical Center in the Gaza City, where the terrorists routinely deploy themselves so they can use the civilian infrastructure and the civilians themselves as human shields. Despite this attempt to hide behind civilians, the IDF reported that nearly 100 terrorists were eliminated in the battle. The IDF operation included a combined arms maneuver that saw ground troops supported by air and artillery advancing to engage the terrorists at close range. Although this exposed the ground troops to increased danger, it was necessary to ensure a minimum amount of damage to civilian infrastructure and people. This is typical of the kind of operations the IDF has been conducting in recent weeks, including raids in the southern neighborhoods of Gaza City and on the outskirts of Shati and Beit Lachia. These raids are expected to continue in the coming months 
to deepen the achievements of the IDF and to allow the remaining Hamas operatives in the north of the Gaza Strip to be flushed out where they can either surrender or go down fighting, as some of them prefer. Fighting has also continued in the south of the Gaza Strip, where forces of Division 98 arrested three terrorists yesterday behind the top door of a strategic tunnel in Khan Yunis. The three terrorists who had decided to save their lives by surrendering instead of going down fighting were transferred to the Shin Bet for interrogation where they provided information that will be used in uncovering more tunnels. Division 98 is now maneuvering in the Gaza Strip, focusing on the areas around Khan Yunis, where the remaining pockets of Hamas activity need to be confronted. They replaced the 36th Division, which left the Strip about two weeks ago. After a short rest, these troops began training exercises to prepare for the possibility of operations in the northern part of Israel, where Israel is threatened by Hezbollah and other Iranian-backed forces in Lebanon and in Syria. Also operated in Khan Yunis were battle team number four, my unit. These troops have engaged in several fights with terrorists in recent weeks and have taken many threats off the battlefield, including fighters, but also discovering large stockpiles of weapons, ammunition, and military equipment of all kinds, as well as workshops where rockets and launchers were manufactured. All of these IDF units utilize drones to gather intelligence and feed it to computers via wireless communication networks. This allows them to locate and close in on threats quickly. For example, if a terrorist appears from a tunnel or other hiding place, a drone will see him and the computers it is in communication with will alert the nearby troops or possibly direct nearby armed drones to neutralize the threat within seconds. This makes it very hard to sneak up on IDF troops and even harder to survive an attempt and escape after you were caught. This is an example of the high-tech means Israel is using to battle terrorism in the Gaza Strip. These methods are unique to the IDF, but as I said before about the water technology, this technology and the methods used to employ it in defense against terrorism and many other threats will soon be available to Israel's allies. Terrorists and the authoritarian regimes who support them all over the world should take note of this. Shifting focus to Judea and Samaria, where the IDF is also operating against terrorists, usually in cooperation with the Shin Bet and border police units. You've probably heard about the undercover operation that put a stop to a plan to attack Israelis from a hospital in the Palestinian city of Jenin. The IDF chief of staff, Herzi Halevi, issued a statement about the operation in Jenin on Tuesday. This is what he said. This morning we put a force of the IDF into a hospital in Jenin inside which a terrorist squad is planning to carry out a serious attack to kill Israeli citizens. We do not want to turn hospitals into battlegrounds. On the right there are patients and on the left there are doctors and nurses. And in the middle are terrorists. But we are even more determined not to allow hospitals either in Gaza, not in Judea and Samaria, not in Lebanon, not above the ground and not in shafts and tunnels under my house patients will become the place that is the shelter for terrorism and it is the one that allows the terrorists to build their military to rest to go out to carry out an attack and where necessary we enter even the most complex places to eliminate terrorism there to harm terrorism to strike terrorists and wherever there is fighting to kill them those we are fighting hard terrorism we fight terrorism hard he brought us into gaza with great force we will continue to operate in Gaza. We will continue to reach wherever Hamas is. We will continue to attack 
We will continue to kill terrorists. We will continue to destroy infrastructure. In conclusion, I want to salute the heroes of Israel fell defending the state in the past days. Major in reserves, Netzer Simchi, 30 years of age, for Masad, a combat officer in the 87th Battalion, was killed yesterday in the battle in the northern part of the Gaza Strip. Captain in reserves, Gabriel Shani, 28 years of age, a commander in the 6646 Battalion, was killed yesterday in the battle in the southern part of Gaza. Sergeant Major Yuval Nir, 43 years of age, from Kfar Etzion, a fighter in the 6646 Battalion, was killed in the battle in the southern part of the Gaza Strip. Once again, please share these videos with anyone you know who is concerned about what is happening in Israel and wants to know how to pray for the situation here. Also, please join me in praying for the peace of the IDF soldiers, the peace of Israel, and of course, for the peace of Jerusalem. Your prayers means the world for me and for the rest of the people of Israel. So please continue. And thank you for sharing the truth of what is happening in Israel with the rest of the world.